So I'll take a look at the Avenger first. When I first started playing, this ship was really impressive to me because it has this really nice um, entrance animation at the front. The character is holding on to parts of the cockpit geometry and uh, it gets into the seat. And it appears they built a wooden mock-up in the mock-up studio, because that's how I usually do it, that resembles the shape of the in-game thing. So the motion capture actor um, can make an an can produce an animation that can be easily used in-game. And I was really impressed. I also hoped the, that the whole game would be like that. So then there's the exit animation. Now pay attention to what's happening here. The chair is moving really fast, which is probably sped up from a previous animation. And the character is cleanly standing up in a very isolated way. Like he's waiting for the whole thing to turn, then cleanly stands up. And I noticed while I was playing with the Avenger a few times, something kept bothering me when I was um, playing with the ship. And I figured out it was the, the cockpit seating animation. Because I figured out uh, that if I want to get in the ship quickly, I always use the front animation because it felt more natural. And that the rear seat animation, it just... It felt like something's dragging down the, the gameplay if you do that animation all the time. And unfortunately, that animation is getting reused too much in the game, and they're reducing the quality of the animations and the ship designs to fit to that animation. So they're reducing the quality of the ships, which increases the profit margin for them so they can pump out more ships at a lower quality. Also consider the Avenger is a very unique ship in the game. It has a lot of functionality that you usually don't find in newer, smaller ships in the game. It has a complete interior. It has a bedroom. It has a ramp you can walk into. It has a rear entry animation and a complex mo-capped front entry animation. Ironically, the Aurora is one of the few ships in the games, out of all the ships that are possible, that has a very natural uh, cockpit seating animation. Let's take a look. <clears throat> There's a character squeezing past and taking a seat. When I'm playing with an Aurora, I never feel the cockpit seating animation gets in the way of the gameplay because it feels like a natural gameplay <clears throat> element because they actually took the time to mocap it properly of a character squeezing past the seat to get into it. So can you get out of the mission? <clears throat> Notice that it's natural. And it's, it's some way it's also even comedic because of how the ship is built, you have to actually squeeze past it. So the next example is the, it's called the Grey Cat Rock. Okay, let's take a look at this one. But it's, it's built like, um, like a mix between a sand dune buggy and a rover. And the normal expectation, if you ask a person, how would you enter a dune buggy, you would have to climb in from the side normally because the engine is in the front. And in my view, out of laziness, in order to reuse the seating animation, they remove the front end, uh, front part um, where the engine would be, and they just open it up so the character can walk in, turn around, slowly sit down. Which is a further piece of evidence that they're just trying to cut corners with the animation system, and the designs of ships and vehicles are going to suffer for it. Now, some people might say in real life, there are vehicles that exist that have front entrances. Well, to my knowledge, there's only two vehicles I can, on the top of my mind, remember that have front entrance like that. First being uh, the Sherp, which is a Russian Altair vehicle that opens in the front. They could, could make the argument that it was built after this vehicle for the front entrance. My opinion is they tried to cut corners, but somebody might have the reasonable argument that this was the inspiration for it. Or the BMW etc this vehicle. Well, would you have noticed this vehicle existing before I just showed you the photo? That's not really a well-known vehicle in, among players. So, <clears throat> now I accept the argument that, okay, maybe it was inspired by the front end of this vehicle, which would be against my argument that it was out of pure laziness um, to reuse the front end of animation. Well, a third piece of evidence is two things. First one is the Tumbrel uh, Cyclone which appears to be built after the, the, Halo, the, the Halo Jeep. <clears throat> and what's interesting about this vehicle, I don't have the video for it now, 
is that if you get in this vehicle, there's actually, again, there's a mocap thing where the character gets in, holds on to parts of the dashboard, and the frame of the vehicle gets in. And what do the Aurora and the Tumbrel Avenger, the um, Cyclone and the Avenger have in common? They were all pretty much designed early in Star, Citizen, Star Citizen's development, way back when the developers still cared more about impressing their players. Then the next piece of evidence is the Rock DS. Now, the, I first I'll show you the description of the Rock DS. The idea was to have um, more capability for mining and make it a core vehicle. So the idea was to turn this one into a core vehicle. Now, what they could have done is something like this. You know, if this was the original rock, for example, with its own cockpit, you could have made a double cockpit or something with two enclosed cockpits to have a nice co-op experience. However, this being the Star Citizen developers, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. And what we got at the end with the Rock DS was this thing. They copy pasted a chair from the inside, attach it to a crane, and when you want to get it into it, do you actually have to climb the frame to get into it? No, it just goes down and you use the same seating animation like in most ships. Okay, so perhaps I haven't convinced you enough yet, so I'll try the next argument. Now, this is the worst example of, of the corner cutting is the Anvil Hawk. Now, if you look at the Anvil Hawk, it, first, it looks really nice. Look from the front, it has really nice, these uh, F-35 or SU-57 type intakes in the front. Really aggressive looks, like really cool looking ship. And you see like this um, bounty hunter aesthetic with the guy with the trench coat. You think, okay, that looks like a nice ship, so what's wrong with that? I have to be a bit cynical with me to examine the issue here. Okay, so first off, at the rear end of the ship, you have this seat where you can capture your bounty, you put it in that seat, and you get sucked up under the thing, then you can transport him. Now the first problem here is, why didn't they make a bounty hunter ship that has an, a rear compartment where you can walk into? Like something like the Avenger is maybe a bit smaller. And the answer to that is probably because it's more work to have ships with interiors. It's easier for the developers to just have ships without complex interiors. But again, it's laziness, just because imagine how much improvisation you have to do in your design thoughts to have a bounty hunter mechanism where the, the bounty target sort of gets sucked into a weird rear compartment on the outside of the ship. And obviously, as you can guess, how does the character get into that thing? Obviously, he walks up to it, turns around in that slow seating animation, and he's going to enter it just like this guy, okay? Now it gets even worse. Now you might think, okay, maybe they just improvised a bit, they just wanted to save some, some development time. Well, here comes the worst part. You can say, okay, at least the ship on the front looks really nice. You probably get some really cool animation like on the Avenger when you climb into the ship with the ladder and you hold on to the cockpit, it's going to be really amazing. Well, is it? I think it won't. So here's how the cockpit entry animation looks like. And you guessed it. The thing extends down to the ground. So a character again can reuse that animation to get into the ship. They got so lazy with the development of the ship that they have two different entry points in the ship and both of them are built so they can reuse the same animations. The ship literally lowers its cockpit seat down to the ground just so the animation can be reused. Okay, then you can make the argument at least if, if it has less functionality than the Avenger, surely the price is lower. Okay, let's take a look at that. The Avenger, Titan, here, yeah, price 55, original price 50, uh, okay, so about, if you buy with the starter pack, $70. How much is the Hawk? Twice as much. And that's the argument here. They're decreasing the quality of the ships, and they're keeping the price at the same level, or increasing them in the price. And this is going, this is going to draw, <clears throat> this is going to drag down the quality of the game, because the way the seating animations, the way ships are built around reusing the same slow seating animations. And as I said earlier, notice that very old ships in the game and, and vehicles like the Aurora, uh, the Cyclone, 
And what's the third one? And the Avenger. They all have these this hard custom animation work done to them because back then, my guess is they're five or six years old, the developers were not still sure of getting constant funding from players, so they worked really hard to actually impress the players with stuff. And now I would like to show you a scene from the Star Citizen the Reunion video, which is sort of an advertisement for the, uh, the Mercury Star Runner. Now slow the video down to 25% speed and pay attention to what this character is doing when she gets out of the chair. Notice how the chair actually is on a swivel that she can control and she gently gets out of it. And notice how the movement, the intent of her movement is to roll herself out of the chair while she's standing up and turning away and the chair is swiveling with her, which means they mocap the whole thing because it's an advertisement for a ship and they put extra production value in it. Well, if you use the Star Runner in-game, uh, the seat is fixed, and when you sit into it, it's it's sort of a it's not as bad as the backward sitting animation, but it's like a really stiff stand next to it and then squeeze in from the side animation. So they're putting production value into trying to sell you the ship, but the actual in-game production value is much lower for the animations. So why should you care about the seating animation? It seems like such a trivial part of the game. Let me to show you why it's important. So let's assume, uh, I'm not sure if the board is the right one, like a game loop. Let's say you are trying to get into your ship, take off, fly somewhere, land, and get out of the ship. Okay. <clears throat> so this is your timeline. This is where it starts, and this is where it ends. Let's say. This part here is you running to the ship, you run into the cockpit, and this is the point where you enter the cockpit. Right, this is where you have the animation completed in the cockpit. And here near the end, there is a similar thing where you have it over right here. Now, if this part is an unnatural animation that, that just doesn't feel right, and this creates like a drag on the game, like, like it sort of it drags the fun down. You have this part that's red in the game, that's like a defective part of the game. Now what happens, some players notice the problem right away, because they pay attention to stuff like that. In this case, I pay attention to animation systems. And some players don't pay attention to it, they won't notice the problem right away. However, as they play the game, as they go through that loop, get in the ship, get in the cockpit, get out of the cockpit. And every time they have to do that thing, like something's dragging down the fun, but they're not noticing it right away. Like just something doesn't feel right. Then eventually they figure out, okay, wait a minute, that animation is annoying. And then usually the feedback comes in and says, the animations are too long, too clunky, too sluggish, too slow or something. And then the easy fix for the developer is, okay, let's shorten the animation instead of redoing it. Then this part gets shorter, but it's still defective. And at some point, instead of repairing the defective part in the game loop, we just remove them or shorten them to, well, not being there at all. You notice that when you get out of the seat backwards on the Avenger, the turnaround animation is sped up from what it used to be. And eventually you end up with a game loop, uh, and the entire game being basically fragmented into different pieces, and the defective pieces that should have been done better, completely getting torn out. And this is why good organic seating animations that are custom animated for every single seat and every single ship are important. And to finish off the video, I'd like to show you some animations from Red Dead Redemption 2, in this case, online mode. Let's take a look at picking up that frog animation. Notice how it's perfectly blending between getting to the animation point where it's animating and to where a character is moving. Let's look at some animation of picking up plants. So a character steps up, picks up the thing, puts it in. And it effortlessly, it appears, it blends into the regular standing around animation. Notice, no matter how far away I'm rotated from the plant, it always blends in correctly without you noticing the blending. Now these pickup animations are already really good in Red Dead Redemption Online. Well, but they also have pickup animation from trees. Check this out. Again, steps up without any blending visible. Picks it up, puts it in a pouch. Notice the perfect blending from any orientation that you are to stepping up to picking it up. 
And now to get back to the argument of seating animations. What is I'm getting into the bit of line? Horse. Getting off the horse. Tailing around as much as I want. Getting in the horse again. Getting off the horse. Trying from behind. Notice that it counts for different animation directions towards the horse and it perfectly blends towards it. Notice I can do this all the day. It, it doesn't get in the way of the gameplay because it's an organic part of it and it's perfectly animated and it's fluidly blended. Notice that. Like you never get annoyed in this game by getting off and on the horse all the time. Unlike Star Citizen where getting into a cockpit seat is a major source of annoyance for players. And that's the point I'm trying to make with this video is that Great animation quality is basically the substance of a 3D game, and it carries the quality of the game. And if you skip on good animations, it, it's dragging down the quality. And no matter how good the top-level goals of the game are, the game will not be funny if the animations suck. And that's the whole thing about Red Dead Redemption, and especially online mode. The top-level game goals for grinding are like getting bounty hunter levels, getting collector's levels. It's actually not that interesting. Because it's always the same thing. You shoot stuff, you, you carry the corpses to the sheriff, the real fun comes not from the reward from the mission, it actually comes from the physical activities. Like you pick up a corpse, you put it on your horse, you ride away with your horse. Then the final point of the video is that like, uh, sometimes people think, why make all these videos being critical of Star Citizen? If I supposedly don't like the game. And here's the thing, I actually like the game. But the problem is, it's an early access game. And to me it appears the developers, they have I think they have lost the, the will to impress players with high quality because they're getting paid anyway. As I laid out in the arguments in the video. And the only way to fix that is to be very fiercely critical of things you don't like, you don't like in the game. And then if you think of getting a ship, examine that ship for the quality issues. And if you don't like a tiny thing about it, don't get the ship. What that does, it actually decreases the revenue of particular ships, and then developers are going to look at, okay, wait, why is the ship not selling? And then they might get the hint that they have to increase the quality of the game again to actually start selling stuff, because the game is at a dangerous point right now. Where the developers um, feel they're sure of the funding that they get from the players. That's why you see this decrease in quality. And the thing is, if you protect the game developer from feedback, you're not making the game better. You're just increasing the profit margin of the company owners.